New York City powerboat spectacle, flipping out in St. Pete, and a possible family get-together in Key West. All this and more today on Performance Boat Television. Runs America presents Performance Boat Television. Brought to you by OffshoreOnly.com. Experience the thrill of power boating online. Hello and welcome to Performance Boat Television, the fastest half hour on the water. After the split last season from the APBA Offshore Division and the formation of the new Offshore Super Series, fans and racers alike were left to ponder in just what direction could the sport be headed. Add to the mix a third sanctioning body, the venerable Superboat International Series, and you just might need a special program to identify all the players. While each of these organizations maintain their own agendas and their own rules, many of the race teams participate in each simply for the desire to race. Now this desire may be the catalyst that could one day bring these three groups together, and that day may be closer than many could have originally imagined. Both SBI and OSS announced recently the acceptance of an agreement that gives the APBA Offshore Division the opportunity to race the two groups at the Key West World Championships in November. Now the Conk Republic Offshore Powerboat Racing Association, the organizer of the event, was granted funding from the Monroe County Tourist Development Council with the expectation that all of the three offshore bodies could race together for one world championship. If things continue as planned, it could be the biggest offshore world championship in Key West in 10 years, harking back to the old glory days of the sport. We will keep you apprised of this situation. Through the many changes offshore racing has experienced over the years, one name stands out. John Carbonell, founder and director of Superboat International. Martin Sanborn explains. Anyone that follows the sport of offshore powerboat racing knows that the sport has been fragmented over the last couple of years. One of the constants of this sport has been John Carbonell from Superboat International, who's developed a tremendous reputation for satisfying sponsors' needs and providing value to the cities, making them want him back year after year. The uh, credibility of the sport has been shaken quite a bit in the last two or three years, and uh, our intent is to build on that credibility. And as you can see, we've had races in New York for the last 14 years. This is our 13th year here in Miami, and uh, just trying to create the stability and make it positive instead of a negative sport. A key element to any sanctioning organization is strong, long-term sponsor relationships. The main objective when you're dealing with sponsors is uh, give them what you promised them. And we've been trying to do that and actually give them more than what we promised them. But this is a sponsor-driven sport. And all of my sponsors uh, have been happy, and, and we've had them for a long time. Reggie Fountain has been a major supporter of mine, uh, Sunoco Oil. Uh, and uh, Featherlight now has come on with a five-year commitment with us. So uh, that's the main thing is... Uh, all of them look to see what the exposure value they're getting, and we try and give them maximum exposure value. And what is John Carbonell's vision for the future of offshore powerboat racing? My vision is to try and build, uh, again, on the, uh, the spectators in order to make the sport grow. That's mainly what, what I'm looking for, and how fast that's going to happen, I don't really know. We'll still be here grinding out at it. Well, he certainly has long-term staying power, with other sanctioning organizations actually joining SBI at some of their events. While the future of offshore powerboat racing may be cloudy, one thing's for certain. John Carbonell's Superboat International Racing Circuit will be around for years to come. In the Superboat International Series point standings to date, number 57, Nichols Offshore, a 47 MTI, maintains the lead in the Superboat class at 1,000 total points, with an average speed of 101.85 miles an hour so far this season. In the Superboat V class, the number V71 Rio Roses Lake Cumberland, a 42 Fountain, is in the top spot with a total of 3,357 points and an average speed of 82.05 miles per hour to date. And the PX1 Bacardi Silver, a 46 skater, is in the number one points position in the Superboat Unlimited class with a total of 2,903 points and an average speed of 95.47 miles per hour.
These points will soon change as the Supervote International Series will be in Deerfield Beach, Florida this weekend for their national championships. When we come back, we go to St. Petersburg, Florida for round two of the OSS. Poker Runs America presents Performance Boat Television. Brought to you by Lucas Oil, the world leader in heavy-duty and high-performance lubricants. Round two of the Offshore Super Series came together in St. Petersburg, Florida, as over 30 canopy boats got ready for battle. With thousands of fans once again packing the famous St. Petersburg Pier, the racing kicked off with the V-bottoms. Adrenaline Racing looked to make it back-to-back -back wins after capturing the first ever OSSV checkered flag in Biloxi, but could only muster a second-place finish, as this day belonged to Spider-Man. Todd Welling and Jim Spiros had their skater V-bottom absolutely dialed in as they took off from the start and found clean water all the way around the 4.8-mile course. A sweet revenge from Biloxi. Biloxi, we're a lap and a half from the finish, broken propeller. That was it for our day. Today, it was our day. So sweet, sweet, sweet. Skater, V-bottom, Mercury power. It, wh what else can you have? I mean, look at this. We ran and ran great today. Although Adrenaline Racing could not repeat their Biloxi performance, the wildcard OSS V-Lite powered by the crazy Cubans, William Ross and Lazard Fonteca, captured their second consecutive checkered flag, followed by the always colorful Typhoon Racing Team. Well, no, we had a good day. We really did. Um, we, we expected smoother water. Uh, that north end was rough. It was really rough. We were going through that. We weren't taking it a, a, as many chances as we was taking Biloxi and stuff like that. But, you know, everything turned out well. As stormy weather brewed on the horizon, a very impressive fleet of 11 OSS cat lights began their parade lap around the famed St. Petersburg course. Back together after a one-year hiatus, the In Motion Again team of Jerry Sorrentino and Joey Groton reminded everyone how dominant they've been in the past by jumping out to an early lead and absolutely dominating the field for their first checkered flag of the year. The race was not without incident, as a position battle led to the CRC and Dirty Duck teams getting a little too friendly on the back stretch, resulting in a barrel roll by Slug Hefner and Matt Rice. Fortunately, everyone was unharmed, and the CMS team of Bob Bull and Mitch Miller crossed the finish line in second. It ran so well, it was unbelievable. We, uh, we, we went out there, we took off, uh, got a great hole shot, jumped the fleet right on bat, and that was our whole goal today. I said, you know, if we can run out front in the beginning, we're going to be hell to beat, and... Uh, and Jerry Sorrentino did an awesome job, man. We were running them turns over 100 and something, and just, it was great. Oh, yeah, we were, we were running hard. We were running good. Our setup was definitely there today. It just no question about it. Joey and I just, we're back. That's all I got to say, we're back. Everyone on the pier was hoping to see the huge rooster tails of the OSS cat class. But Mother Nature would simply not let it be, as the thunderstorms rolled in, resulting in the cancellation of the race. The big boys will just have to wait for round three at the St. Clair River Classic. Let's go on board Dirty Duck and share the St. Pete experience with Slug Hefner and Matt Rice. Easy. Their CRC. We'll fill the inside then. Let's fill the inside. Start with your turns. All right, but we're going to fill the inside for CRC can't get through. Let's fill the inside. Get ready now. Let's go inside, Slug. Go inside. All right. Easy, easy, Slug. Oh, You okay? Yeah, you okay? Veteran Super V throttle man Nigel Hook races one of the more seasoned boats on the offshore circuit, the number seven Lucas Oil Scarab. This season, he's made some strategic modifications to the boat. Martin Sanborn explains. In the Premier V-Bottom class, Lucas Oil, with the oldest boat in the fleet, they made some significant changes this year to the boat, starting with the cockpit. Visibility is really crucial when you have that many boats. You have, you know, 12 boats in a class uh, running at the same time on these tight courses. Before, we used to be sitting side by side. And if you're on the outside and you make a left turn, you're blind in certain spots. With this mechanism here, the way we do it in Europe, front and back style, tandem style, You've got perfect visibility to the left and right in, in every situation. So from a safety point of view, I think it's a lot better. The other thing which, which I, I like about it is you're actually on the keel line. And if you're driving or throttling, I don't think there's anything better than a V-bottom which you've got to balance on that keel 